Why spend four to $600 on a Honda motor when you can buy a knockoff for under $200? And while we're at it, let's go ahead and test the Briggs & Stratton as well as the Harbor Freight Predator. In the first test, we'll run the engines for 48 hours and compare fuel efficiency and oil consumption. Then we'll see which engine makes the most torque. Then we'll see which engine is the fastest at dragging a tractor, trailer, and Cousin Eddie. So why spend $400 on a Honda motor when you can buy this knockoff for around $150? In the motor's description, it references the GX160 gasoline engine. It claims to make 6.5 horsepower just like the Honda motor. It even comes painted in the Honda colors of red and white. It says the whole machine adopts high quality materials, metal cams, and forked camshafts. There's no extra cost for the dents in the fuel tank. According to the instructions, fall enough oil before starting. The knockoff Honda references a paper filter, and unfortunately, mine did not come with one. The foam filter that did come with the engine is just not going to do a very good job of keeping dirt outside of the engine. The engine has a throttle control, choke, as well as a fuel shutoff. The engine is advertised as making 6.5 horsepower, but on the side of the motor, there's a sticker indicating that it makes 7.5 horsepower. The Honda clone is made in China, and the knockoff Honda comes with a spark plug made by SAP. Before adding fuel and oil, the knockoff Honda weighs 27.6 pounds. At a price ranging from four to $600 is this Honda GX200. Low vibration from precision engineered components. We're gonna test that. It claims to be a commercial grade engine designed for most demanding commercial applications. Cast iron cylinder sleeve provides longer service life. It claims to start easy and run quiet. While the knockoff Honda is rated between six and a half and seven and a half horsepower, the genuine Honda is only rated for 5.5. Unfortunately, there's even damage to the genuine Honda motor and the Honda has a much better air filter system. The Honda includes a paper filter as well as a foam cover. The genuine Honda motor is made in Thailand and the Honda comes with an NGK spark plug. And the genuine Honda is a lot heavier than the knockoff at 34.9 pounds. At a price of around $150 is this Predator, which is sold at Harbor Freight. It's a 212cc overhead valve engine. Just like the knockoff Honda, it's supposed to make 6.5 horsepower. Just like the Honda engine, the Predator has a paper filter along with a foam cover. The Harbor Freight Predator is made in China. It has a cast iron cylinder that withstands wear and abuse. The Harbor Freight Predator comes equipped with a Torx brand spark plug. And the Predator weighs 34.9 pounds, which is very close to the same as the Honda. At a price of $312 is this Briggs & Stratton. Durabore cast iron sleeve for extended life. The 208cc engine is rated for around 6.5 horsepower. Just like the Honda and the Harbor Freight Predator, the Briggs & Stratton has a paper filter and a foam cover. The Briggs & Stratton is made in China. And the Briggs & Stratton comes with a spark plug made by Champion. And the Briggs & Stratton weighs 32.52 pounds. I'll be using the Supertech 10W30 full synthetic motor oil in all the engines. The oil capacity for the engines is just over half quart. All the engines have a built-in compression release to make starting the engine an easy process. So unfortunately, we're not going to get good information from a compression test. And it takes 16.5 kilograms or just over 36 pounds to spin over the Honda clone. And the Honda takes 17.5 kilograms or just about 39 pounds. And the Predator takes 23.5 kilograms or 52 pounds of peak force to spin over the engine, which is by far the most yet. And the Briggs & Stratton takes the least amount of peak force at 32 pounds. So the Briggs & Stratton is the easiest to start at 32 pounds of peak force, Honda knockoff 36, Honda 39, and Predator 52 pounds. Let's go ahead and fasten the Honda and the Honda knockoff to a test stand for a side-by-side -side performance comparison. Each engine will be driving an alternator. The alternator is providing power to a battery and the battery is providing power to a power inverter. Each setup will be providing power to a 500 watt halogen light for right at four hours. After that, I'll run the engines without a load since a lot can go wrong in a 24 hour period. I remove the factory fuel tanks and each motor is attached to a fuel cell that holds between six and seven gallons. And the empty fuel cell for the Honda weighs right at 16 pounds. And the plastic fuel cell for the Honda knockoff weighs 9 pounds. I just filled both fuel cells with 87 octane containing 10% ethanol. And the fuel cell for the Honda weighs 54 pounds. The Honda clones fuel cell weighs 59 pounds. The no load RPM is set for 3600 on all four motors. And the Honda clone started on the second attempt. With the sound meter about three feet from the motor, the Honda clone is pretty loud at 94.1 decibels. And the Honda started on the first attempt. And the Honda makes less noise than the Honda clone at 91.7 decibels. Both engines have had a few minutes to warm up and the exhaust sniffer is going nuts with the Honda clone. Definitely not a clean burning engine. A lot less combustible gas is coming from the exhaust on the Honda. Running under a moderate load, the muffler temperature on the Honda is around 430 degrees Fahrenheit and the cylinder head is around 150. And the muffler on the Honda clone is about 130 degrees hotter and the cylinder head is also hotter. Comparing engine vibration, the Honda is around 300 millimeters per second squared. And the Honda clone is vibrating way too much for the vibration tester to even measure. I'll be surprised if this engine doesn't shake itself apart before 100 hours. This engine is way out of balance even for a single cylinder. After four hours, I remove the belts from the alternators and both engines have had very close to 24 hours of runtime. So let's go ahead and compare fuel and oil consumption. The Honda fuel cell started out at 54 pounds and it now weighs 25. So the Honda used 29 pounds of fuel in 24 hours. And the fuel cell for the Honda clone started out at 59 pounds and now it weighs 29 pounds. So very close to the same with a small advantage for the Honda. And the Honda holds just over half quarter motor oil and I just 
drain just over half quart of oil from the crankcase. I'll go ahead and add fresh motor oil to the engine. Unfortunately, the Honda Clone is very low on motor oil. There aren't any visible oil leaks, so this motor is definitely burning oil. Oil from the Honda Clone is on the left and the Honda is on the right. And the Honda Clone burned quite a bit of oil. I'll go ahead and put in 0.6 liters into the Honda Clone, the same as the Honda. The empty jar weighs 430 grams. And the Honda Clone weighs 704 grams. So that's only 274 grams of oil. So the Honda Clone burned 178 grams or just over 6 ounces of motor oil. The jar with oil from the Honda weighs 882, so that's 452 grams of oil in the jar. I just filled up the Honda fuel cell and it's starting off at 54 pounds and the Honda Clone is at 60. After running a few hours, I went ahead and added a little bit more motor oil to the Honda Clone just so it doesn't run out of oil and self-destruct. Another 24 hours has passed for a total of 48 hours of runtime. During the past 24 hours, I had to add oil to the Honda Clone twice to keep it from running out of oil. I did not add any oil to the Honda. 24 hours ago, the Honda fuel cell weighed 54 pounds and now it weighs 26, so that's 28 pounds of fuel in 24 hours. The fuel cell for the Honda Clone started out at 60 pounds and now it weighs 30. So that's 30 pounds of fuel compared to 28 for the Honda. So the Honda is 5% more fuel efficient. I'll go ahead and collect oil samples from each of the engines. To avoid making a mistake, I'll label each of the bottles at the point of collection. I'll send the oil to an oil testing lab and they'll measure the oil for wear metal content. I received quite a few questions regarding the cost of an oil analysis. The cost is right at $35 if you don't need a total base number analysis or $45 with the TBN. And a spark plug from the Honda Clone has a lot of carbon deposits from burning oil. I had did not expect to see that much buildup from a motor with only 50 hours. And the spark plug from the Honda is still looking pretty good. A side by side comparison, and there's a huge difference. Let's kick off the Predator against the Briggs and Stratton. The fuel cell for the Briggs and Stratton weighs 56 pounds, and the fuel cell for the Predator weighs 60. And the Predator fired up on the first pull. And the Predator is a little bit lighter than the Honda and the Honda Clone at 94.8 decibels. Also, the Predator doesn't burn quite as clean as the Honda. And the Briggs & Stratton also started on the first pull. The Briggs & Stratton makes about the same amount of noise as the Predator at 94.4 decibels. And the Briggs & Stratton is burning a little bit cleaner than the Predator. The amount of vibration with the Briggs & Stratton is very close to the same as the Honda. And the Predator vibrates a little bit less than the Briggs & Stratton and the Honda. And the cylinder heads on both engines are pretty close to the same at around 150 degrees Fahrenheit. The hottest spot in the muffler is a little bit cooler for the Briggs & Stratton. Unfortunately, the Briggs & Stratton stalled three times during the four-hour test powering up the alternator and halogen light. So that'll have to be taken into consideration for the fuel efficiency comparison. And the first 24-hour test for both engines is finished. And the Briggs & Stratton fuel cell started out at 54 pounds and it now weighs 25. So the Briggs & Stratton used 31 pounds in 24 hours, the most yet. And the fuel cell for the Predator started out at 60 pounds and the fuel cell now weighs 31. So 29 pounds of fuel consumption is the same as the Honda. I'll go ahead and drain the oil from both engines and put in some fresh oil. The Briggs and Stratton and the Predator are not burning oil yet, but this is the first 24 hours of the test. And I drained out 876 grams from the Briggs and Stratton and 886 from the Predator. So the Honda, Briggs and Stratton, and Predator are all within 10 grams of each other. The Briggs and Stratton is starting off this time at 56 pounds and the Predator is starting at 59. And both engines started just fine on the first pull. And it's been another 24 hours for a total of 48 hours of runtime. And the Briggs and Stratton's fuel cell started out at 56 pounds and it now weighs 28. So that's 28 pounds in 24 hours. And the Predator's fuel cell started out with a weight of 59 pounds and it now weighs 32. So 27 pounds in 24 hours is better than the Briggs and Stratton. I'll go ahead and collect oil samples to send off to the oil testing lab. I've already labeled each of the collection containers to avoid a mix up. It'll be very interesting to see the wear metal content for each of the motors. We'll go over the results later in the video. Video. And a spark plug from the Harbor Freight Predator has quite a bit more carbon buildup compared to the Honda. So the Harbor Freight is now burning a small amount of motor oil. The Briggs & Stratton spark plug looks just as good as the Honda and the Briggs & Stratton is not yet using oil. After running the engines for 48 hours, the Harbor Freight Predator used a total of 56 pounds of gasoline. The Honda used 57 pounds, Briggs & Stratton 59, and Honda Clone 60 pounds of gasoline. Let's test engine performance using a go-kart. I'll use a new drive belt with each engine since the testing will cause a lot of wear on the belts. Let's chain up the go-kart to a tractor and compare bottom end performance beginning with the Honda Clone. And the Honda Clone, which is rated for 7.5 horsepower, barely made it to 200 pounds of pulling force. And the Honda, which is only rated for 5.5 horsepower, easily outperformed the Honda Clone at 200. 39 pounds. And the Harbor Freight Predator has a little larger displacement than the Honda, but it fell a little short at 233 pounds. And the Briggs and Stratton only made it to 213 pounds before running out of steam. And Cousin Eddie is the mad scientist behind the next two tests. After the first practice run, Cousin Eddie put down the flag and took his position on the trailer to hold down the lawn tractor. With a new drive belt in place, the Honda Clone pulled a trailer and lawn tractor and Cousin Eddie 25 feet in 4.15 seconds on the first attempt. And Cousin Eddie thinks the Honda Clone could do better, and the Honda Clone finished the second pass in 3.95 seconds. And the Honda Clone finished the third pass in 3.95 seconds for a three-pass average of 4.02. 
and Cousin Eddie is moved to the back of the trailer for a better view of the action. And the Honda makes a lot more bottom end torque and it easily outperformed the Honda Clone at 3.59 seconds on the first run. And the Honda once again outpaced the Honda Clone at 3.54 seconds on the second pass. And Honda just made its fastest time yet at 3.44 seconds on the third pass for an average of 3.52 seconds. And Cousin Eddie's getting tired of standing, but he's still on the back of the trailer for the Harbor Freight Predator test. And the very affordable Harbor Freight Predator just made the fastest run yet at 3.39 seconds on the first run. And Cousin Eddie's a bit of a show off, and now he's doing a sideways plank on the tractor seat. Very impressive core muscle strength with Cousin Eddie. And the Predator lost a little bit of speed on the second pass, but still did great at 3.44 seconds. And the Predator performed close to the same on the third run at 3.59 seconds for a 3 run average of 3.47 seconds to take the lead from the Honda by 0.05 seconds. And Cousin Eddie says it's good luck if he's on the front of the trailer. And the Briggs and Stratton struggled on the max torque test and the struggle in this test at 4.1 seconds on the first run. Cousin Eddie says he can lay on top of the tractor to help with aerodynamics to help the Briggs and Stratton win. And the Briggs and Stratton might be slow, but at least it's consistent at 4.1 seconds on the second pass. And the Briggs and Stratton made its final pass in four seconds flat for an average speed of 4.07 seconds. So the Harbor Freight Predator came out on top with the fastest average time of 3.47 seconds. Honda was just about as fast at 3.52, Honda Clone 4.02, and Briggs and Stratton 4.07 seconds. Let's get rid of the trailer and test the entire RPM range in the 100 foot run. And it's 5.31 seconds on the first pass. And the Honda Clone is a little faster this time with the front of the go-kart reaching the finish line in 5.16 seconds. And Cousin Eddie insists that he wants in on the action on the third run. And the Honda Clone made the final pass in 5.47 seconds for the slowest time yet. So throwing out the third pass, the Honda Clone averaged 5.24 seconds on the first two passes. And the Honda accelerates noticeably faster than the Honda Clone. And the Honda finished the first run in 4.91 seconds, the fastest time yet. And the Honda is a little bit faster on the second run at 4.86 seconds or 0.05 seconds faster than the first pass. And the Honda continues to outperform the Honda Clone on the third run at 4.71 seconds, the fastest time yet. So on average, the Honda is almost a half a second faster. And the Predator outperformed the Honda on the last test and it outperformed the Honda on the first run at 4.76 seconds. And the Predator showed very good consistency and maintained very good speed on the second run at 4.76 seconds. And the Predator finished the third run and right at 4.76 seconds the exact same time as the first two passes. And the Briggs and Stratton struggled on the last test and the struggle on this test finishing the first run in 5.42 seconds. Fortunately, the Briggs and Stratton's a little faster on the second run at 5.31 seconds, but is still at risk for a last place finish once again. And the Briggs and Stratton completed the third pass in 5.31 seconds, the same time as the second run. So once again, the Predator came out on top at 4.76 seconds, but the Honda wasn't too far behind at 4.83. The Honda Clone averaged 5.24 seconds, and the Briggs and Stratton, 5.35 seconds. And cold weather performance might be a factor in some applications. After placing all the engines outside all night, the engines are pretty cold at just below freezing. Fortunately, all the engines fired up on the first pull. I'll leave a link to the original oil analysis reports in the video description. Very interesting results on the oil analysis. Aluminum is a wear metal and the fake Honda has more aluminum in the oil than the other three brands. The presence of chromium is an indicator of piston ring wear and the Predator has the most at one part per million. However, one part per million is a very low number. The fake Honda has the lowest amount of iron while the Honda, Briggs & Stratton and Predator have 12, 13 and 14 parts per million respectively. So all of the engines look great with regard to low levels of wear metals. Air-cooled engines have a high operating engine temperature and that caused the oil to thin out. Finally, I added a lot of oil to the fake Honda during the test, which allowed the fake Honda to have the freshest oil of all the brands. An engine with a lot of blow-by tends to have more insolubles. So it makes sense that the fake Honda has 0.2% insolubles compared to 0.1% for the other engines. The Honda definitely seems like the best engine, but we consider the price and performance, the Predator definitely seems to be the best value. A big thanks to everyone that supports the channel and allows me to put together these more expensive videos. It really helps and makes a huge difference. With that being said, I'm really looking forward to hearing your future video ideas. Thanks so much for watching. Please take care and look forward to next time.